This is the competition. Are you guys ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Reverend JJ Hampton, come on up. I am Reverend J.J. Hampton, the Reverend of the Church of High Living and the Bonny Bay Saints. Anyways, how do you know Marjorie Taylor Luke Green's been working on your computer? There's white out all over the screen. This is how stupid Donald Trump was. He went to stop and chop the kind of frontier fiber. <laughs> okay, next, Nick Kelly! <laughs> Nervous or a little cold. All right. What's up, everybody? How are we doing? You know, I was reading an article the other day that dogs can pass diseases to human beings. I figured, all right, fine, I'll wear a condom. <laughs> you know, I hate the KKK as much as the next guy, but I do often wonder what their away uniforms look like. <laughs> okay, now Dick Kelly, look at Ryan. Man. Wow. wow. It's a you. I can't see him all. Uh, I find it's really hard being a gay man in Massachusetts, and it's especially hard for me because I'm only attracted to women. Uh, I'll, I'll do a quick little impression. It's a little crowd work. Uh, it's actually Louis C.K., so all you guys need to do is sit there and watch as I... I was going to pull my dick on masturbate. All right, there you go. around. Uncle Yasha! How's it going, everyone? All right. Um, so uh, I was seeing my girlfriend, and she had a little problem with our sex life. She told me uh, she didn't like that I had a problem with premature ejaculation. But I was kind of feeling like that's more of a her problem. Um, but she told me she had some solutions. She told me I should try getting into Tantra. So she got me a copy of the Kama Sutra. Uh, but I just kind of feel like that put me in an awkward position. <laughs> Uncle Yasha! Frenchy! Bonjour! Uh, I'm Frenchy. I saw a bumper sticker the other day that said Jesus Saves. Uh, I was pretty uh, interesting to see that he's not living collection plate to collection plate like the rest of us. <laughs> you guys ever take a shit so big you were lonely afterward? <laughs> you know you've made it when you can be murdered, uh, assassinated instead of murdered. All right, that's it. You went over that. That's Frenchy. <laughs> you went over that. <laughs> that was three. Lines. I mean, that was three. I mean, if there were three, that would have been a different story. But anyways, okay. <laughs> Bob Tiani. Yeah. Yeah. Quick impression. Quick impression. Basketball. This is a basketball sports writer in a locker room trying to interview Shaquille O'Neal, who just walked out of the shower stock naked. Hey, Shaq, you guys have some problems in defense. You care to explain that? <laughs> Shaq's got a giant cock. Yeah, we, you know, I, uh, I was walking downtown in Boston the other day, and it was an immigration about, uh, it was a rally about immigration. A woman said, sir, do you have an opinion about the Supreme Court's decision about DACA? And I went, yeah, yeah, you know, it's winter time now. So I don't get DACA outside of 4.30 in the afternoon. I don't like it. <laughs> ah, Bob Gianni, I bet you that one killed in Boston. Yeah. All right, please. Keith Allen with a Y. Yeah. Hey, hey, oh, I wasn't prepared. I, I brought two songs. Hey, just what is the right amount of masturbation? Because it's not zero, uh, and it's not uh, it's not nothing. There's got to be. You could have a, uh, 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 you know. I remember in eighth grade, one of my friends was talking about uh, that we, how we wiped standing up. And then I laughed and l along as we all made fun of him, and I learned that you w wipe sitting down. I didn't know that before that. <laughs> uh, all right, oh. Keith Allen with a Y. And we got the last one for the first round of one-liners is Greg Lotta, please. Yeah. The Holocaust isn't funny, but if you put it in Comic Sans, it's slightly funnier. <laughs> 
saw a guy wearing a shirt that said 4K for cancer, and I thought, that's a really odd price for cancer. <laughs> okay, a sales joke. Okay, I gotta get my two one-liners in. Why don't orphans play baseball? Why? They don't know where home is. <laughs> what do you call a thousand rabbits hopping backwards? What? A receding hairline. Uh, Speaking of receding hairlines, Reverend J.J. Hampton, you got two minutes! <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I've been getting bored during the COVID sh bullshit that we've been closed down for, so I was thinking about coming out with a new movie. You were talking about Willy Wonka, so I had to come up with this one. I was J.J. Hampton in the medical marijuana factory. Instead of Oompa Loompas, got Puffy Wuffies. Take a toe of my vape. Then you'll feel this pure exhilaration. <laughs> and then, buffy, buffy, buffity do. Look at that fat joint coming for you. Buffy, buffy, buffity do. Why don't you smoke that fat joint with me? What do you do when the joint's in front of you? Do you go ahead and toke it one or two? Or do you go and let it pass by? Oh, why? Oh, why? Why not talk and then get high? Woo-hoo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Uh, another movie is <laughs> Out This Summer. Alec Baldwin plays Donald J. Trump in Swindler's List. The Rise and Fall of an American Fucktard. Now there's all different um, uh, levels of stupidity. You got Mensa, High IQ, <laughs> Normies, Mentally Challenged, Fucktard, George Santos, Herschel Walker, and then Donald Trump. So he's way down at the bottom. That's a whole new level of stupidity. Because I just want to talk about the illegal break-in and insurrection from the FBI to federal Biden's of investigation of my home, Florida, Mar-a-Lago. You got 20 seconds. Get in. Outstanding. <laughs> okay. I am a certified feline massage therapist. Now that makes me a professional pussy petter. Y'all have a good day. All right. Reverend J.J. Hampton. Wait, wait, I got to make a quick interruption. We got to get the drum kit. I'm so sorry, you guys. But, uh, <laughs> oh, hey, you need my sign holder? Just take this moment to let you guys know You're good. that I also have fallen in love with my mother. I don't know what to do. That's all I got. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, we're fast with it. Sorry about that. That's all right. No problem. After this, there's a hip hop show downstairs, right? Hip, no, hip, no, hip, it's up hip, here, up here. Up here. Oh, up here. Up here. Lush no, Honey's downstairs. Lush What's Honey, downstairs? Lush Honey downstairs. Two floor music party all night long. Looks like a hipster guy. Oh, it's oh. all tangled in. So we get back to my mom. You know, it's just something it's about her breath. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Nobody can relate. Yeah, uh, I can this relate is my to your comedy mom's breasts, you guys. All right, I'm out of here. Seen your mom. Uh, <laughs> I've seen your mom's breasts. They're beautiful. Can you show me a picture, maybe? She's I a senior. <laughs> All right. Speaking of who was a senior three times, please put your hands together for Mr. Nick Kelly. Hey. Hey. Ooh, what's up, guys? All right, I'm back. <laughs> I just went through the line and came back. There's like fucking seven of us. And I'm bipolar, so like partner, he's like, oh, I think I'm the worst comic here. And then the other half of me is like, yeah, it's top ten. You know, <laughs> you know I, I, I had a buddy that uh, actually drove four hours to go get some pussy. Uh, isn't, isn't that a little too much? Isn't that a little too much? A little bit? You can, you can talk during this part. Let me ask you, how, how much is too long to get some pussy? How, how long have you guys driven for some pussy? Jason, how long have you driven for some pussy? You drove across country five at least, right? Uh, you went to Jersey for some pussy. You stay on the road with this guy. Jason's a dog. A He's a dog, my guy. He went upstairs. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Hey, well, how long are you guys? Anybody? Anybody else? Five hours? Can you get that? To me. They drove to me. I mean, I get that. You even look at you, Papi. Ah, hey. Hey. Let me just tell you, yo, seven hours, that's ridiculous. This guy's in Baltimore, buddy. I say 30 minutes, man. 30 minutes. I give you a half hour. 30 whole minutes is what I give you. I gotta drive more than 30 minutes to go get some pussy. I'm taking something from her house. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. If gas is expensive. Gas is hella expensive. She's gonna call me later like, have you seen my father's bicentennial $2 bill collection? I'm gonna be like, no. It's probably at the gas station where I asked for 28 on three, bitch. Like, I don't know, like, 
Did I get the light? Is that all? Yeah, no, you yeah. got 30 seconds. I got 30 seconds? You got 30 seconds. Oh, man. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was the light to get off, so now, now I'm all frazzled. Um, <laughs> I actually talked to this other bitch. She, uh, she was in, I should have called them bitches, actually. But really, I talked to this other nice lady. No, I feel like I don't have time. I should just do the rest of the rest of my one-liners and stuff like that. That'd be way more fun. Listen, domestic violence is weird. I, mean, I would never put my hands on a woman, but I'll roundhouse kick a bitch all day. <laughs> Just like that. And, <laughs> and listen, do you think Jared from Subway is getting fatter now that he receives his footlongs rectally? <laughs> My name's Nick Kelly, y'all. Nick Kelly, Nick Kelly. Hey, I'm sorry. Uh, you you got to realize I fuck with everybody. Yeah, they comes to you because I know the escorts do deliver. <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like, I respect everybody, but escorts do deliver, I know. Uh, anyways, speaking of delivering escorts, Logan Rao. Uh, I, uh, I struggle reading and writing jokes. Um, not because of, like, writer's block or lack of creativity. I'm just from Wisconsin. <laughs> not reading that big out there, believe it or not. They taught us, like, 20 words through middle school and high school and 15 of them we're not supposed to say anymore. I'll let you guess what those were. I, uh, I, I'm my parents' least favorite child, which makes some sense, because my, my brother's a pharmacist, my sister's a mechanical engineer, I'm doing this, and what doesn't make sense is my oldest brother is my parents' favorite, and he shot someone. True story. Damn. They support gun violence. But uh, I, the important part is that um, the someone that he shot was uh, himself in the head. So uh, oh, oh. you can laugh. You didn't know. Him. Uh, uh, it was it was eight years ago. It's fine. Uh, it's a true story, and it was it was rough. You know, I was sixteen at the time, and. Part of the reason it was hard, very Christian family, and in my brother's note, he said, I'm an atheist, you guys should renounce your faith too. And you know, part of me hopes he's right. I kind of hope that God, or I hope he's wrong, I guess. I, 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 hope that, uh, I hope that God is up there. And you know, God is real, because I think he'll hear me telling these jokes, and he'll send me to hell so I can see my brother one <laughs> He was an atheist that shot himself. He's not up there. Let's be honest. Thank you. Logan Rowe, everybody! Oh, wow. I thought the most disturbing thing I could say is actually that you kind of look like a young Ned Flanders. Like, that's the first thing I fucking thought of when I saw you, like fucking Ned Flanders. But speaking of someone who doesn't look like Ned Flanders, Uncle Yasha! How's it going, everyone? I once flew to Jordan for some pussy. Fuck driving five hours. I flew around the world. I am not ashamed to live that. Um, uh, but that was actually pretty close to home. Um, I actually grew up in Russia. I'm Russian Jewish. The Jewish kind of obvious from the curly hair. But I'm only 5'8 Jewish, not totally Jewish. What does it mean to be fucking 5'8 Jewish? That means I make really good financial decisions, like five out of eight times. <laughs> Um, but I actually did grow up in Russia um, during the Soviet Union. It was a really interesting time to grow up there. Uh, my family was dissidents. We went against the government, so we were always worried about the KGB coming. So anytime someone knocked at the door, we were all scared. I remember we were sitting in the kitchen one time. Someone came banging at the door. We all got really quiet. My dad went quietly, opened the door, and he comes back and goes, It's just the fire. <laughs> That's the good news. Uh, but we grew up, uh, we grew up really poor. Um, I remember my grandfather, he was actually exiled to Siberia. We got a telegram from him once, and it just said, Worry. Details by mail. Um, um, but yeah, being Russian and Jewish and American is kind of weird, right? Because like, none of them are really doing good right now. Like, you know, when I'm in the Middle East, when I'm in the Middle East, I'm like, I'm, I'm Russian. When I'm, you know, in Ukraine, I'm American. Like, so you gotta always, you know, you change up your identity. Um, but, uh, yeah, I remember, you know, Russians are very self-deprecating. I remember I was talking to my dad on the phone, and he goes, Yaakov, listen, I have two pieces of news. Which do you want first? And I said, I don't know, the good news? And he goes, well, who said there's any good news? <laughs> All right, thank you, everyone. I'm Uncle Yasha. Uncle Yasha, everybody! You will be even more fucked up if you went to Jordan to fuck Jordan. Anyways. 
please put your hands together for Frenchie. Frenchie got two minutes, so let's go one. All right, bonjour. You guys all talking about traveling for sex. I'm married with kids. I have to make appointments for sex. <laughs> I like to give away free ladders. Um, a lot of times I'll go up in the middle of the night and prop it up against the side of the house. And I like to go up there and knock on the window and tell them they've won real quick and then I dash away into the night because I don't want to take any credit. Or as they say on the news, I'm still at large. You guys ever wonder what you guys do and if you, you know, hit the lottery, scored some fuck you money? I wonder all the time. I know what I do personally. I do a lot of things. I'd open up a stationery store and I'd constantly change its location. I'd open up a boomerang store and we'd have a no return policy. <laughs> I'd open up a casual Asian dining experience called low maintenance. Uh, at that restaurant on the menu there would be an aphrodisiac called miso honey soup. I smoke a lot of pot, so I think a lot of stupid things, and one of those things is I wonder if the guy that drives a Zamboni has to put Zamboner on his W-2. <laughs> no? Come on. That one killed at the checkout line, guys. Seriously, guys. Check it out. Um, you know, I'm an involved dad. A lot of times I'll take my kids places and, you know, looking like I, an Amber Alert, uh, being with two young kids, people generally pay attention. This woman one time at Burger King offered to buy me uh, and the kids our food because she thought that I was a widow. And uh, I said, you know what, lady, I don't babysit my kids. I'm involved, Dad. You know, I'm going to say something to this lady. And you know what I said to her? I said, the kids are still pretty upset about my wife. Can we get ice cream, too? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Leave it all for Frenchie. Please, put your hands together for the next comedian, Bob Giannini. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Northampton. You know, I just found out, I just found out, I just looked up online, I thought Northampton is actually a Latin word that means, uh, fuck Amherst. <laughs> <laughs> you guys keep talking about getting sex and hey, late, you know. I was at a bar recently, this gay guy comes up to me and he goes, hey man, he goes, you want to come back to my house and play hide and seek? He goes, if you find me, he goes, I'll give you a blowjob. I go, oh yeah, but what if I can't find you? And he goes, I'll be behind the couch. <laughs> I fucking was. I fucking was. Yeah, I just got some tickets to a concert. I'm gonna go to the uh, 45 cent tour, you know, with Nickelback and uh, 50 cent. <laughs> no? 45 cent tour, anybody? Love <laughs> stuff, well, but um, we just had Martin Luther King Day last uh, couple weeks ago. Very good, you know. I did my part, you know. I went to a Black Lives Matter rally. Well, I mean, it was a Celtics game, but... <laughs> I had a nice holiday. I saw my, bro my brother came down from Maine, came down with my nephew. My nephew's in high school. So after high school, he wants to be a rapper. I go, really, a rapper? I go, that's a great idea. You know what? When I think of hardcore rappers, yeah, and where they're from, I think of Maine. <laughs> If you're a rapper from Maine, what are you going to call yourself? You know, LL Bean J? <laughs> MC Kenny Bunkport, you know? <laughs> I like them a big music guy. I just found out that, uh, you know, Michael Jackson has a son named Blanket? Yeah. Yeah. Blanket just started his own band. Yeah, it's a cover band. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was just driving up here, man. I saw a big sign that said, Twin River Casino uh, presents Rick Springfield. Remember Rick Springfield? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Holy shit, I look up his side and go, man, this guy's had so much plastic surgery, he actually turned into Jesse's girl. That's my time. Keep it going for Bob Giannini. Uh, and I think we're about to see a hardcore rapper come on up. Put your hands together for Keith Allen. Yeah. All right, yeah, all right. So here's the second of two songs that I had planned to couch within uh, a sort of a character thing, but here it is, just... Raw and wriggling on the ground. <laughs> um. Tell the Jews <laughs> I'm on their side. Tell the blacks I'm on their side. Tell the gays every breath. I'm on their side. Tell the 
Orientals. I'm on their side. You see a sort of a character that goes this side. I'm on their side. Would that were I. I'd like to try to be your friend guy. Tell the Uyghurs. I'm on their side. Tell the gypsies, I'm on their side. Tell the Hutus and the Tutsis, I'm on their side. Tell the Hispanics, I'm on their side. I'm on their side, would that were I. I'd like to try to be your friend guy. Thank you very much. Woo! That's a character. It's so satirically it does that time. Woo! That's all right. Keep down, everybody. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. Yo. Freaking, uh, okay, yo. Is uh, Greg Lotta still in the room? There he is. All right. I didn't see you. Ah, you were hiding in the back. Put your hands together for Greg Lotta. Yeah. I'm Greg. I'm 25. I have Asperger's. I mean, I was on Tinder. White girls make profiles like police reports, like their bios. It's like five five, three tattoos, drives a jeep. So you get an Amber Alert for an introduction. The Amber Alert's for after the date, not before. Women are always trying to move too fast, the relationship bothers me. I actually have an autistic girlfriend. I think she's so pretty and she's so unique because of the autism. And I want to keep her exactly that way. So I only feed her tap water. If she wants bottled water, put in the microwave first, 30 seconds popcorn, she's good to go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to eat pussy from my Hispanic friend. They do it the same way we do. You know, they say the alphabet. They have accents over the vowels. So now that I just flick my nose up in the air, you know? Sometimes it works. I don't know why. Sometimes why. Uh, there's this age old argument what's worse, the Holocaust or slavery? And you always say Holocaust first in that argument. So you think it would be that one. But the slavery was an away game and Holocaust was a home game, so it's kind of unfair to compare them, you know? And Frank's whole family got floor seats to the arena, they all got matching flair, they got showers at halftime, it was a whole thing. Slavery was a year and a half boat ride, and you know, the refs were biased, you know? It wasn't a fair comparison. I think the best thing Kanye could do for his brand is go from Kanye to Ye to Jeffrey Epstein. That way, the same people who want to cancel him we just ignore him, all those woke Democrats who, you know, ignore Jeffrey Epstein. We just ignore Kanye. He takes on the, the name. Uh, Chris Hansen got a new gig. He's going to the Democratic National Convention. The Clintons are going to shit their pants. <laughs> They're really big true crime fans. All right, thank you. Keep it going for Greg Luck. All right, so we're going to have two quick rounds of one-liners again. Hey, guys, how are you? You came in late. We've got a comedy contest. I think these guys went to go get their hookers, I mean their escorts. It was a hooker. It was, it was a I was just saying, well, no, he said it would deliver. Hookers don't deliver, escorts do. No, 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 he probably borrowed mommy's credit card. But anyways, uh, so I'm gonna do two, my quick two minutes. Like, listen, all right, uh, um, this guy sang his song, man. Greg sang his song, that was amazing. Remind me of like, uh, what the fuck was his name? Uh, Adam Sandler, right? He used to sing all those songs. You guys like Adam Sandler movies? Yeah. But you know that Adam Sandler's doing a trilogy of remakes? Lord. Yeah, really. First one, he's got a guy in a little on the spectrum, likes to give quality H2O products to the military <laughs> prisoners. Yeah. Right, waterboarding boy. <laughs> okay. Second one, stars. <laughs> you just got that. No, yeah. I did get it. I'm, I'm laughing at the second one part. I'm laughing that there's a second one to this. Oh, no. It's a trilogy. It's a trilogy. I know. Second one stars Caitlyn Jenner. Caitlyn's a jeweler. Likes to gamble. Knows a basketball star. You know, Lamar Odin. It's called Uncut Jenners. Oh. Yeah, right. The last one. He stars Bill Cosby. Uh, yeah. Lives in assisted living, you know, dementia unit. Gets this woman to have dinner and jello and a nightcap every day. You know what movie I'm talking about, Steve, right? Fifty first grapes. Overturned, overturned. And I got I got some black friends, they said, Todd, that's racist. 
That's racist. They said, no, it's not. He was going to do an all-male version with Kevin Spacey first. <laughs> you were talking about Jeffrey Epstein. I don't care what they say about Epstein. He definitely was well hung. Or is that hung well? Grammatically, I'm still not sure. So, all right. We're going to have to do two rounds of two one-liners. So that's four one-liners for seven people. Eight people. That's fucking a lot of math. Too much math for me. All right. Please put your hands together for the first one. Reverend J.J. Hampton. He had it right there. Too much weed. No, actually, it's never too much weed. Yeah, it really does. Oh, I was uh, over at the uh, MGM Springfield, and I looked on the wall, and they said, "Boys to men are coming." Shouldn't it be? Men to the frickin' senior center by the way? Look at this. I thought Herschel Walker was gonna start asking for um supplement checks for vampires and werewolves. I thought it was gonna be ah, you know those vampires and werewolves, they need friends and money too. With your nineteen dollars a month, they can get everything they need. I am Herschel Walker. <laughs> Reverend J.J. Hampton, and we can tell he's definitely a Republican. Uh, <laughs> Nick Kelly! You! Thank you. <laughs> We're gonna introduce like four times. I get it. We're gonna introduce like 80 times. You're just like, I applauded the first 70 from all. I get it. Okay. Uh, one line. It's, it's Black History Month 2023, everybody. Give it up for Black History Month. It is. It is or, or as I like to call it, the world's wokest white person Olympics 2023. <laughs> you know, all of these school shootings are terrible things. They're terrible things. You know, what really bothers me is that, you know, if only these high school boys had waited until after career day to realize they'd be perfect for the police academy. Oh. Oh. Awesome. Oh, that's it is. All right, next, Logan. Wow. <laughs> so this this is probably shitty to do, but uh, I was gonna plug some shows quick. Um, uh, the Sopranos. Great. Oh God, that never works. I keep doing it. Um, this seems like the time to mention that I do actually identify as a good comedian. So if you guys, so if you don't laugh at these jokes, you are oppressing me. Thank you. Both get around. Please yeah. identify him as a good comedian. Uh, next, Uncle Yasha. Yeah. Hello, hello. Um, so I remember the first time I went to uh, therapy and I got diagnosed like with bipolar disorder and they put me on. Abilify, and I remember going to my therapist like a couple of weeks into it, and I was like, I don't know about this medication. It, it makes me feel like it's not at all like myself. And my therapist just looked at me and was like, Yeah, that's kind of the point. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, it's a little hard dating. Uh, you know, when you have mental health issues, I have like multiple personality disorder. But then I moved out here, and a lot of the girls I was meeting were all yammers. So I was like, Damn, match made in heaven. <laughs> Thank you, Uncle Yasha. Frenchie! I'm a pessimistic shopper. When something's on sale, it's 50% on. <laughs> we had a bar the other day. This beautiful woman came up. She put her hand on my hip and she was dancing sensually. And she said, they're playing my song. And I said, I'm sorry, ma'am. I can't help you. I'm not a copyright attorney. <laughs> <laughs> <Get better. laughs> Bob Janini. <laughs> it was the U.S. Open. And Jovic, uh, Jovic, uh, Novak Djokovic won. You know, like, jo uh, he still won't get vaccinated. You know, people are like, why won't this guy get vaccinated? It's like, hello, the guy's name is Novax. <laughs> nice. I was walking around the other day. There was a woman holding up a sign that said, defund the police. So I walked up and I says, why would you want to do that? That makes no sense. I mean, they've got some good songs. <laughs> <laughs> Keith Allen. All right. Uh, <laughs> checking my notes here. Uh, how, how late 
Can you see uh, your dad's, like in your adolescence, can you see your dad's fully bent over asshole <laughs> and be okay? Is it cut off? Um, <laughs> and, uh, Wait, there's a start off. You know, there's a start. I feel like it's, you know, it's six, six, seven, eight, nine, nine now, you know, it's part of your, it's part of your schema, but, uh, <laughs> oh, and also, does anybody else just always ride in the line between, like, sweaty armpits and hard nipples? I'm always just, there's like a four degree area where I'm always trying to, um, uh, stay, uh, for my nipples. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, I have to go here. Yeah, down south, there is never an ending time for the single father asshole. Uh, they have a dating site for just southern people who want to uh, marry. It's called the Family Trunk. There is no branches, just a trunk. All right, our last one for this round. And the last one's just going to be one, one quick liner. Oh, Greg Lotta. No, you got two. Yeah. And then we're going to go around one last time for one, one quick liner. We'll get one. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. One quick one. No, no. You got two this time. Minor, then you're gonna have one Are the next. Time. Got so you got a total of three. I'm in the same yeah. boat you are. So two now. Two now. Got it. Got it. <laughs> that one doesn't count. <laughs> That's what she said. Fuck. She did. Cross she said fuck too. Correct. <laughs> she said, "Is it in?" I'm gonna start now. <laughs> yeah, she said. All right. Alec Baldwin on the movie set Rust is 1-0 and on no scopes. No? <laughs> it's a crazy argument to say the Jews run Hollywood. You just wait to the end of the movie and watch the credits. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Reverend JJ. You know how they had that movie, The Black Handsman? Well, they must be really fucking confused when they got Nick Cannon, um, <laughs> Kanye West, and Whoopi Gold Hitler. Whoopi Gold <laughs> 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 Nick Kelly! <laughs> <laughs> Only one? Only one. Oh, man. <laughs> Pick the best one. I think all those kids from the Hooked on Phonics commercials are dead from heroin overdoses. <laughs> because if those idiots got hooked on a school subject that easy, heroin probably was a slam dunk, right? <laughs> hooked on heroin did not work for them. Logan Rao. I had to uh, put down seven dogs this week. Pretty rough. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Yes, you. Hey, you. Uncle Yasha! I thought this was going to be a two minute set. I am not ready for it. I'm going to stay with the therapy jokes. Um, my girlfriend's therapist actually did tell her to follow her dreams. But the problem is, she had a dream that she had sex with my best friend, so she fucking had sex with my best friend. Janini! Great therapist. The woman I work with says, I can't believe I live in a country where someone like George Santos can get elected. And I go, You can't? I go, We live in a country where the number one song last year was called Wet Ass Pussy. <laughs> Keith Allen! Yeah. Yeah. Let me get your exercise today. Yeah. Speaking of pussies, I how many how many how many people do yoga in here? Any yoga yeah. any yoga enthusiasts? Hell yeah. There are three massive queefs per yoga class, right? Yeah. Am I right? <laughs> and if you alright. <laughs> queefs are definitely not one liners. <laughs> actually, you wouldn't believe it. My wife is actually a yoga instructor, and I go to yoga all the time. And I only know the name of two moves: uh, "What the fuck are you looking at?" and "Downward Facing Divorce." <laughs> all right, your last one with the one great lata. Oh, did I skip Frenchie? Ah, fucking Frenchie, you're gonna go last. I thought I had been eliminated already. No, I fucking. I'm old, I skipped you. I had the pen over your name, I didn't fucking want to just anyway. But Greg Lapton, mix it up. Rare Thunberg's in the news. I think she can do a lot for the planet, the earth, the environment. 
her and Leo Caprio would make an amazing power couple. All she has to do is get really hot and not age past 20, and they can save the world together for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, Frenchie. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, brake pedal and the gas pedal will both stop your car. One just takes longer than the other. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm going to go round two. Round two is randomized riffs. I got I got a wheel in here. You can be randomized. You got two minutes to riff. Hey, the snare drum's going off in the back. Looks <laughs> like do you guys ever have like a theme song in your head? Hey, right, walk. Like, do you ever? Uncle Yasha, like when you have your headphones on, you like walk cool and you got that cool music. Like, don't you think you wish? I, I wish I could walk like that when I listen to James Brown all the fucking time. I just want really old and white, which means I don't get pulled over. Okay, so we're gonna go in the same order. So we got, you got two minutes, so everybody doesn't have to wait in line, right? Everyone doesn't have to wait in line because everybody's got two minutes, you can come up, right? If you remember your order, uh, Jasmine is going to give me the clipboard back so I can remember it. The first guy, so first guy up, I remember was Reverend JJ, right? There it is. Thank you. There you go. Ooh, catching your titties next time. That a boy, see? Two hands. Speaking of titties, you know why mermaids wear seashells? Because beach shells would be too small. They got nice titties. You should know those titties. Doesn't he was a pervert. And uh, he hated the Jews, too. Well, I don't know what that means, but I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> him and Ford. Fuck go America. Anyways, uh, I really want to hear this whole, your whole thing with the songs. Anyway, okay. So first, this is going to be Reverend J.J. Hampton. And then Nick, you're on deck. Okay? All right. All right. So, what, yeah. come on up, Reverend. Put your hands together for Reverend. <laughs> I spin this wheel, and Reverend, you have two minutes to talk about. I gotta make this spin fucking quicker. <laughs> I have this play every time after sex. I would too. Yeah, but I do it with someone. It does get annoying when I do it. Uh, Reverend, talk about country music. <laughs> Y'all know what happens when you uh, take a country song and you turn it backwards, right? Get your house back, get your car back, get your bike back, get your back. <laughs> That's a straight joke. Yeah. Thank you. Well, then I'm going to just have to come out with a few songs myself. 420 in the morning, not a soul in sight. I was about to sit down and roll this joint up tight. <coughs> As I opened the bag, a strange new perfume rolled. I said, damn, this was so good, she'd only smoke in bowls. <laughs> uh, but country music is a little too depressing for me. I don't care how hyped up it is. I'm a Metallica person, maybe if anybody, any kind of basically break your neck band that's the type i listen to wait that's not depressing huh <laughs> <laughs> that's so depressing i'd rather go to aa and that's depressing enough. i don't want to encourage that one, but I'm well i guess everybody was basically an alcoholic a drunk or a cokehead when they were doing country cowboys or whatever and I guess you'd have to do all that shit to fuck with cows and come home to a big ass wife every single day. Just like mine. She was a very lovely woman though, except she was loving everybody else. <laughs> but it was fun. I'd stick my finger up in her, come out with a couple of rings, a couple of necklaces. I can't do two minutes on fucking country. I tried. That's okay. I tried. Here we go for a rubber. He gave it up. Dying effort. The fucking dog died on that one. Just like that country song he was trying to say backwards. Come on up, Nick Kelly. Logan Rowell, you're on deck. 
Talk about how to earn money. What do you mean? <laughs> That's on your stupid fucking wheel. How to earn money? Yeah. Holy God, I don't know how to earn money. I live out of my car. <laughs> 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 they talked to you about how to earn money <laughs> based on what I've seen on the television. I gotta move that over there because I'm poor and I don't have time. Like, I, you know, we're really gonna get financial advice from a poor man. I'm, yeah, I hope you guys have notebooks because you're really gonna need the. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, don't do that. I mean, you're gonna turn into four aids Jewish if you get my financial advice. <laughs> you're out of your mind. You guys gotta make money. What you do is you get an OnlyFans. And you have to be a woman. And if you're not a woman, this plan will not work. And you have to have boobs. And then you go ahead and sell those boobs on the interweb. Or, or, maybe just or, you go ahead and you try to gamble it on roulette. Because roulette is the only American game where you can lose all your money for no reason. Wait, wait, what the fuck is that? I'm in the middle of talking and there's, there's, you gotta be out of your fucked mind. How to make money? Yo, this TED Talk sucks. <laughs> no, let me tell you something. I, I don't know how to make money. I don't know how to make, all I know is people pay me money for a service, I wipe my mouth off, and then I go home. <laughs> <laughs> I got the whitest teeth in here. You should be jealous. <laughs> but that is kind of gay. If you want to make money, you need to suck cock on the street corner is what I'm saying. That's my financial advice for most of you. Because judging on the ring you know, by your faces, that's all you're able to do. There's, that's, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. There's a couple of you that probably drive buses or something. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, wait, 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 how, much, how much longer do I got? I'll 30 talk, seconds. 30 seconds to talk about how do you make money? Let me tell you how you make money. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> this, is, this is what you got to do. Is it, what you got to do is become bisexual. That's what you do. I think you do because then you can corner the market. And because you, and you can do things like you can fuck bisexual women and lesbians because the LGBT community wasn't specific on the rules. So you can pick two and kind of just jump in. No. <laughs> A lot of gay people here. It's okay. It's all right. I love you guys anyway. I'm getting all this. Make sure that you, that you take that down. I hope you guys become rich from all of that. Keep it going, Nick Kelly. Oh. Hey, you do it. Sucking dick makes money. Come on. We know that. We know that. I'm Nick Brock Logan. Like, I mean, I'm just saying, like, that's how my ex-wife made her money, uh, right? <laughs> fucking the reverend's wife made money that way, right? That's what he was talking about. Uh, fucking not. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't know how you make money, but we'll find out at the end. Okay. Come on up, Logan Rao. Your shit is... It's almost fucking gay, because I don't know what... I, I picked the wrong fucking shit. Here, high school music. <laughs> you know what I mean? High school music. He's from Wisconsin. He's from Wisconsin. <laughs> Soaring, fly. Does no one know High School Musical? Movie? <laughs> Jesus, get your head in the game. That was my sixth grade graduation song. You belong in a camp. <laughs> sixth grade graduation song. High School Musicals. Um. Oh boy, I was in. I was actually in show choir, so I have a little experience in this. Um. I, I was the kid they would they would put in the back because I looked like this, and I I had a mustache when I was like fourteen, so I looked like you know the the, and I had this haircut, so I looked like the kid who should be the uh, you know lead singer and also the pedophile sitting in the front row. Singing. What are other high school musical songs? Um, <laughs> I'm going to see Hamilton in a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Is that high school musical? Um, it's a high school teacher musical. <laughs> uh, you can join me. It's fucking Steve coming in. Oh boy, high school musical. Um, one minute. Yeah. <sighs> 
the feeling you have right now is probably what it's like to watch high school musicals. <laughs> you're like, fucking hell. Either you have kids in it and you hate them, or, uh, or you're like this and you don't know the guy, and I don't know why you guys are here for that then. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> Uncle Yasha, come on up and see what the fuck you get. Frenchy, I didn't forget about you this time. You're on deck, Uncle Yasha. I'm sorry what you did with You are an international fucking part Jew, part Russian. Talk about Thailand. <laughs> All right. Um, Thailand is way on the other side of the world. Um, no, I actually always wanted to go to Thailand. I, I love Southeast Asia. I've only been to Japan. It's the only country I've been in Asia. Um, very under-traveled. Um, what do I know about Thailand? Um, I, I don't even know what the fuck I know about Thailand. Um, I like Thai food. Um, um, doo -doo -doo. Um, I literally like this. I wish I had high school musicals. I would have taken <laughs> I totally would have taken that over Thailand. Okay. They got really cool castles over there, not castles, but you know, the things that the spires, things. Um, I think this is, <laughs> all right, all right. Um, Thailand is like actually the one Asian country I can't say anything about, right? Like I could, I could talk about accents from every other country in Asia. They're very easy to recognize. I don't know why Americans have trouble with it. I don't get that. They do not all look the same at all. Um, honestly, totally different. Um, except for Thailand. Um, so, yeah. Um, it's uh, it's really funny. So my dad is old Russian. And he does not like exotic foods. But there is literally one food he will eat, and that is pad thai. It has to be whipped chicken. It has to be, you know, standard, not spicy. It is like the, the most vanilla Asian food you could possibly get. Uh, but that works, you know. Russian man, pretty vanilla. Uh, Thirty seconds. Yeah. Awesome. Um, cool. Um, so, um, yeah, I was gonna say, what is Thailand known for? I like, I, I think I know what it's known for, but I'm like, is that the wrong country? It's like, is that where like all the little like you know lady boys like? Is that the stereotype? Is that Thailand or is that is that Philippines, Singapore? I don't fucking know. Um, um, yeah, it is Thailand, right? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, just, we're just gonna leave that one in the air, not touch that one. This is the wrong town to be uh, using that as a jumping off topic. So we're just gonna leave that one alone, and I'm gonna hand the microphone right back to the gentleman here. Thank you very much. Uncle Yasha. Uncle Yasha, I'm surprised you to go right to the Thai boys. I'm just saying this is the town to start right with the Thai boys. I'm just saying it's, it's very socially accepted here. I think you actually have to to move in here. I'm not sure that passport stamp has to be in your passport to get a fucking co-op in this town, I believe. I'm not sure. Like, and if you go shopping and they ask you paper or plastic, your answer needs to be, it doesn't matter, I'm bisexual. Speaking of being bisexual, French you're next, and Bob. J J J J Bob, you're. I'm dead. I'm fucking sorry. Do anything in an accent. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Oh, what the fuck? Are you serious? God damn it. Anything in an accent, eh? How awful and racist is that? That's the first one I came up with. It sounded like a Cookie Mart dropout. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it was. I was not. I was hoping for burning dog shit in the human response. Honestly, I wasn't expecting an accent. Well, I meant burning dog shit in the human response. I'm sorry. Um, I don't really have any accent jokes. I really try to make my sex as unracist as possible. But here I am. Um, I don't really like to say things racist because um, I'm white and I have no street cred. Um, holy shit. Yo. Oh my, that fucking wheel, man. Um. Oh. 
What's the Wisconsin accent, eh? Oh, oh, is this oh, the Wisconsin? Crab. Brooklyn. Oh, oh, crab, we love the heck out of it up here. Oh, wait a second, dear. That one gets oh, a little too close to home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, settle down, Jimmy Dean. <laughs> one minute. One minute. One minute, huh? All right. Uh, I mean, uh, one minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh Say one minute in every accent. Can I do some of my regular jokes in an accent? Do it. Do it. It'll make them four percent. Very nice. nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, 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 holy oh, shit, I don't have any accents. I don't have any characters. Uh, I'm supposed to, uh, oh, my God. uh, Bonjour, ya cheesy and monkey! <laughs> 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 Alright, uh, I'm gonna try to make you come again. <laughs> Like this, like all last summer, I would go to this one Indian store. Yes, I'm gonna do the fucking accent. I go, hey, hey, do you have lemon? He goes, no, we have no lemon. We have cherry, we have mango, and we have passion fruit. I said, if you get lemon, I'll get something. No, give me that. Ah, uh, shut up. I go back again. I go back again. I go, do you have lemon? He goes, no, we have cherry, we have passion fruit, and we have mango. I go, okay, you get lemon, I'll get something. I go in there. I go, do you have lemon? He goes, yes, my friend, I have lemon. I said, great, I'll take a cherry. <laughs> That's how you do an accent, motherfucker. Get out. Yeah, fucking racist. Give me our shit. Don't give me our shit. <laughs> Bob, come on up. I'm sorry. Uh, Keith Allen, you're on deck. What kind of fucking stupid bullshit am I going to give you? Hey, can't do worse than anybody else. You can't do worse than me. Fucking donuts. Yeah. <laughs> I love donuts. And I once had a donut in Thailand while watching a high school musical. An Indian accent. Donuts. Yeah. Can't go more than five fucking feet in Boston without coming through a fucking Dunkin' Donuts, I tell you that much. Yeah. Did you guys see this show, Lost on Us? Lost, what's it called, Lost on Us? Yeah. I don't know, I don't know what it's called. They had a scene at 10 miles from Boston, right? And uh, the last episode, there was a picture of a, you know, like a big mountain and a river and all that stuff. You know, the only thing I was missing, it goes, this is really 10 miles from Boston. There'd be a fucking Dunkin' Donuts on that mountain. That's what they were missing. Oh, man. Hey, what do they do with the holes in Munchkins? When they make donuts, when they brew the holes, yeah. I'm just riffing. I have no idea what's going on. Donuts. One minute. One minute, thank Christ. <laughs> donuts. I have no jokes for donuts. Unbelievable. What's that? I said who'd have known. Yeah. Who would have known? Oh, I'm dying up here. Are you going to donut jokes? <laughs> donuts. Oh, it's not my thing. All right, thanks, everybody. <laughs> Okay, we got two more for this round. Two more for this round. We got Keith Allen. Keith Allen, he's he's channeling his inner deep whatever. What the hell are you channeling, dude? I'm just getting to the moment, bro. Are you getting that third eye going? Getting into that moment. Getting into that moment. This guy's getting into that moment. And what moment is he going to be fucking... Oh, what's spinning this wheel? What's this spinning this wheel? What does this fucking wheel say? Spin the wheel. Spin the wheel before they get up there. I, I should, but I'm fucking old and I, I, I'm fucking like, I'm just. Right. You know, bandwidth and all that stuff. Hurry up. And I just wanted to do this, so fucking. Yes, I'll hurry up. Hurry up. He's uh, ready? He's trans. Dinosaurs. <laughs> dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. Yeah, I got a real gripe about dinosaurs, okay? Species name Velociraptor Mongoliensis, okay? Here's my problem, okay? Masquerading. Okay, the the here's the pro, here's the thing with vo Velociraptor, man. It's actually a Deinonychus. Okay, the Velociraptor was a much smaller species, 
Uh, it was actually a chicken, you know, a turkey-sized species. The Deinonychus man is the should be the dinosaur of the century. The Deinonychus, uh, the Deinonychus was six feet long. The Deinonychus had all the all the, the the tendons that allowed it to jump. The Velociraptor is not actually uh, it's, it's not actually the 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 best di dinosaur. Uh, okay. Really, Deinonychus is pretty cool, though. I gotta tell you. Uh, so you guys hear about the hip bones of theropods? Uh, they got. <laughs> The, their hip bone structure is pretty easily identifiable <laughs> if you fi fi come across a f uh, fossil. So, uh, as opposed to a uh, sauropod, uh, Brachiosaurus, Brontosaurus, any of those uh, those larger uh, herbivore, herbivorous uh, uh, species, the carnivorous two-legged species. Those are where you're gonna get. You're gonna see a lot. Of that. You're gonna see that the. the uh, the two-pronged hip uh, hip structure uh, there. You guys hear uh, that they get a the uh, that they get a new pronunciation for Gigantosaurus is Gigantosaurus. You do if you saw the new uh, Jurassic Park film. They changed it uh, and they got new dinosaurs every week. It's pretty fascinating. Uh, and uh, there's there's also. Yo! Go Allosaurus! <laughs> Fucking Rain Man if you watch Jurassic Park instead of Jeopardy. And Judge Wapner. <laughs> that was fucking... He listened to them all on the except for fucking... You know. I don't know, man. Fuck. Alright, listen, the last one for this round, and since these are wonderful riffs, we're gonna do one last round, and you get two minutes to do whatever the fuck you want, right? Sound good? There you go. You can do another song, whatever. Last one, great. Lots of, come on up. When I did spin the wheel, I listened. Flying. Flying. I'm scared to fly. I was getting nervous shits. I left the bathroom before. Called TSA. I'm no flight list. Can't go on planes anymore. I think trains everywhere. I have shit on the trains. I derail the trains. It's terrible. <laughs> I think boats everywhere now. I think tug boats. Tug boats. Soothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> flying would be a cool superpower. And flying, looking down on everyone, you know, like on a superiority over people, It'd be great. It says a lot about me. I need that in my life. Look down on people. Yeah. I think if I could fly, I would fly like this. Like just this way. And not like this. Like I would go like this. You know? Swiftly. I don't know. Flying's pretty cool. You show off, the girls up in the air. It's real romantic. It's a superpower. It'd be awesome. I would fly. Oh, you're wearing a Superman shirt. That's cool. Give me flying Superman. <laughs> Maybe flying backwards, they're going like, <sighs> be really cool too. I'm not flying. What the fuck are you doing with flying? <sighs> fuck. You know? You could fuck while you're flying. Yeah. You could. Yeah. It's kind of like having a girl in a position where like, she has to say yes. Like if you have her, if you're holding her up in the air, what the fuck is she gonna oh, no. say? You know? Like oh, we, you don't want to do anal? Okay. Oh, I'm losing my grip. As she's falling down, you can go in different holes, you know, just like I know that would be awesome. Yes! That's how you get around all great. That's how you do it. But can you imagine you're fucking in your flag and she tells you you gotta blow, don't come at me. Fucking lands on someone like you're like oh it's bird shit it's good luck and like, no, don't don't like bird shit I like, fucking Superman spew on your fucking shoulder like is it heavy would it like break your shoulder <laughs> I don't know man. you want to say something oh yeah 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 <laughs> like, you come up like I was gonna do that bird shit but go ahead come on I see you fucking stalking and creeping here's another mic over here get your own fucking mic. <laughs> Listen, man, the thing is, I don't want to stop Pops. Pops is the man, bro. He comes back here, he hits this shit. <laughs>
Have you ever suffered from beta host syndrome? Have any of you guys that? What is that? that beta wait, host wait, wait, syndrome. Is beta host when two hosts beta are host, each other and they want to fight each other? Beta host is when the host is the beta, but the person like running the show is the alpha. So I'm like, uh, uh, I love you, bro. He almost took it down. <laughs> For comedy. Oh, wow, anyways. Pops is the alpha. He's definitely a top. He's a pegger. Watch out. We're gonna take like a five, ten minute break. We're gonna do some voting, all right? You guys, hang around. They, they were doing two minutes. Yo, Steve, anyone wants to shout on me, they got a shout, low end. He's I taking your two minutes you. from you. Oh, no, no, wait, you got the two minutes. They got two minutes. Uh, well, we're going to like 10. It's 10. Well, then we got the showcase, two. Let's do the three of them, right? Let's just know, let's Maybe three minutes. Okay, let's do the two minutes. We're gonna do three groups of two minutes because we gotta like because you guys want to do time for the showcase, right? Yeah, you gotta do showcase. So. Yeah, so we we're we'll gonna do two. Do, we'll do two well, rounds. We did promise you. We'll do so two, let's two, two, two group of three improv. Group of three people. What is going on? I just, yo, yo, beta, 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 beta. 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 It's gonna beta. take fifteen minutes. Beta. 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 This is the fucking hard. Beta. Beta. Show me up. Put the fuck down. I don't like. You want to sell the merch? Look at you got some hats over here that say slut. Shut a whiskey on me. C. Alpha beta. C. D. C. D. C. D. C. D. No. Slut. We got slut. We got vagina hat. He's got the weed hat over there. We got seduce me. Will you seduce me? And we got the last hat. How much is this hat? I don't know. Just fucking ask. Oh, buy it. All right, listen. We got. We're gonna do two minutes, right? Everybody gonna come up. You got fucking two minutes. What? Right? Do you want to do two minutes or not? Uh, you guys were gonna judge things, right? No. We're just trying to get some news. <laughs> listen. Okay. I'm always judging everybody. I love okay. it. Okay. I listen. You know what? You know how they say Planet Fitness is the judgment-free zone? Bullshit. I judge every ass in there. Thank you. You're welcome. Agreed. He has a great ass too. I don't give a shit. Anyways, we're gonna do two minutes, and then we're gonna judge. Oh! And then whoever won the competition, the round of the two rounds, will get ten minutes against are, are Jason. We, no, are we? Wait, 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 we're not. We're not doing a random topic. No, two minutes or whatever the fuck you want. Two what? minutes. Of, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Like whatever. Look, I just, I'm just confused. Bro. You were because I had such great riffs already ready for you. I, I don't want to, I don't want to make you guys suffer, Nick. Like, right. like you look like the dog in the fucking dog pound with the thing on the head, and then like you were fucking like, I love you, Nick. But shut the fuck up. <laughs> you want two minutes? When you explained the rules, that wasn't in it. But yeah, I love it. Well, it wasn't. But you know what? I fucking adapted and overcome because my riffs sucked. <laughs> right? Like, I would truly admit, I fucked up, that rep sucked, but you guys did amazing. Fucking that super and that flying shit, fucking killed it at the end. That's the fucking way to do it. Ooh. Not that you all didn't, Bob, you did fucking good shit too. You brought all the, you did the callbacks. No, you did the callbacks. Callbacks are amazing. He's feeling bad. All right. <laughs> you don't pick me out of this bullshit. No, I don't mind. I wasn't talking to you, I was talking about I'm just looking at you, but I'm going on here. He's not giving me eye contact, so I'm doing the same. So I'm just looking at you. Got me. All right. I got you. Reverend, come do two minutes now. Let's go. Two minutes. I gotta do a few songs. If you don't want to do two, you don't do. Do what you want. Go. Well, these are the most uh, religious beats I have. Uh, <laughs> nobody ever asked a white kid that was born or grew up in the projects how. We were profiled. Because I was 12 years old, I lived in the projects, I was just going home, but I always got fucked with by the cops because I had the long hair and the patches on the back. You don't get profiled of anything but a drug addict. <laughs> uh, I live in the hood now. That's always fun. It's always like dinner and a show at night, and you get to see people, you know, get shot, robbed stabbed here and there. It's always fun. <laughs> I grew up in uh, East Harvard, Connecticut. I don't know if you know, anybody here knows where that is, but I grew up in my school. Yeah. It's called Synergy. 
and it was the alternative education school. And so when the cops came in with that case full of drugs, we all at one time asked for samples. <laughs> yes. Uh, I lived in Maine as a kid. I grew up and I got married when, right after my 16th birthday. Now, I was living in northern Maine where it got really freaking cold, so I got a really big woman and saved on the heating bills. <laughs> Like I said, I was telling you guys earlier about how, you know, I stuck my fingers in, came out with a ring, came out with a necklace, came out with a couple watches, but that was the best vacation year ever. Thank you, good old time. Last one. All right. No, I think I'm good. Thank you, Reverend. Keep it going, Dick. Come on up. Yeah. You sitting next? No, I said Danny. Oh, you sitting next? I'm like, God damn. Come on, man. Right. Come on. Well, on to the next one. <laughs> well, this is like two minutes, turn. Am I doing it? Listen, oh yeah, whatever. Well, we'll, we'll go now. And we'll do whatever the fuck Pop says because I don't know what's going on. Just whatever. I, <laughs> I, um, let me see. I got, I got a couple more one liners for you guys too because I, I had extras. Um, and doing this before I do my little joke here, but I, I could never be my own boss. I don't know anybody that works from home here. Does anybody work from home? No? Sadly. You do? You do? You're an idiot. Yeah, I could never be my own boss because the sexual harassment would be for real. <laughs> like, like, I'll give you a hand job if you finish this report. <laughs> well, you spoil me. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how I do every day. <laughs> that, that would be every day I work for me. Um, <laughs> Oh my goodness. If Valentine's Day is coming up, Valentine's Day, it's time to, to find out. There's a lot of single motherfuckers here, so that's great. Um, <laughs> I'm looking at in the crowd. Valentine's Day. I like, you know, on Valentine's Day, I like to take pictures of me and my Valentine. You know, because most people do that with their Valentine's. You take a little selfie with them. I send it out to all my friends, but they get pissed at me, and they keep asking me to stop sending them dick pics. God damn. Okay, okay, whatever. I do. <laughs> I had a friend that came into town. Okay, you got a minute? Give me one. Thing. This is my last joke. I had a friend that came into town recently, and uh, and he, you know, we graduated high school together. He wanted. He's from New York, and uh, now, and he wanted to come say what's up. So he brought a friend with him to come say hello, because you know how people bring friends with them that you might get along with uh, in the future. Your high school old friends. And uh, he brings a friend along with him, and uh, I'm sitting at the bar next to his friend, and he's on the other side, which is really awkward, and I don't really know much about this guy, but the game is on, and uh, the commercial is, it's on throughout the bar, the volume is, and the commercial comes on, and I'm kind of humming along to the State Farm commercial, I go, like a good neighbor, State Farm is queer. <laughs> Oof. I was hoping that he didn't hear me when I said that, but he did, and of course immediately, boom! The, the, the gay alarm goes off. They, he had to arrest me for this. And he, he said, that's offensive. You can't say that. You can't say that. That's very offensive. I said, what's the matter? You guys aren't good neighbors? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nick Kelly. Yeah, damn. <laughs> I guess they are not good neighbors. <laughs> I learned that in NoHo. You learned that in NoHo. Okay. Please put your hands together. Logan Rao. Logan Rao, you got two minutes to go. So my brother shot himself. <laughs> and I know what you're thinking. Hilarious. But uh, I I don't think I'm going to kill myself. Uh, not because I don't want to. Don't get me wrong. Um, but like the sequel is never as good as the original. <laughs> also, I as a, as a wannabe comedian, I'm concerned that at my funeral, like my, my other siblings or my parents would be there and you know, they'd be like, I can't believe, you know, eight years later, Logan killed himself the same way his brother did. And then my other brother, still alive, would be like, yeah, it's super sad. Kinda hacky though, right? <laughs> <laughs> Kinda hack, copy in the city, all right. Uh, that's enough. We can lighten the mood. Uh, why I, I started comedy, I'm sure we all started comedy for the same reason. And uh, that is because our uncles touched us as we were growing up. <laughs> right, everyone? Um, no, my, my uncle never touched me. I lied a little bit. My uncle never touched me growing up. He only made me touch him. Uh, he was a very selfish lover. 
Um, I did, uh, I whispered the wrong name. I'm with somebody. I whispered the wrong name during sex recently. I actually, I whispered my dad's name, which is really awkward. My uncle got very upset at this. Um, I, I do want to, I've said some things, but I do want to mention that I am a very progressive man. Um, but like 1800s progressive. So, you know, slavery, bad, horrible, awful. It's like, should women have the right to vote? Well, let's not get out of hand here. One thing at a time. <laughs> I'll end on that. I'm sexist. <laughs> The Hank you were looking around as it fucked up he was talking about his uncle touch him and an uncle Yasha is next! <laughs> touch her funny moms, dude. Alright. Let's talk about therapy on drugs. Um, yeah. So, uh, I might have mentioned I am Russian, I grew up in Russia, and there's a, a lot of things I can say about Russians, but one thing is they don't really believe in mental health therapy, shit like that. So I did not get the therapy I needed growing up. So I was pretty fucked up by the time I got to college, and which was okay, because then I discovered drugs, right? Like drugs, great therapy. Yeah. Um, I discovered pot my first day of college. I was a late boomer. I got really into it, and I quickly started selling it, because you get to save a lot of money that way. So then I got really into like cocaine, ecstasy, acid, and I started selling all those, right? Because it's like way cheaper when you're the one selling it. And acid was the like the special one for me. Like I had a really special relationship with acid. It was really therapeutic. Like no kidding, right? Um, and uh, I decided, you know, because I wanted healthy relationships in my life, that I would like solidify my relationship with acid. So me and my uh, buddy, who I was living with, we started doing tripping Tuesdays every day, every week. Tripping Tuesdays. The only problem is I taught Wednesday morning. I got the best fucking reviews of my life. Nah, it's so then we we're like, tripping Tuesdays aren't enough, so we instituted follow-up Fridays. And then we we're like, no, let's keep going, man. But it escalated quick, and then it was solitary confinement Sundays. Um, I did actually go to jail. Um, I wasn't there long, like a week, because you know I was white back then too. Uh, and uh, but uh, I kept doing acid. Uh, and uh, I remember later in life, you know, I had a job. I was a manager at a tech company, and I went to a dead show. You know, one thing led to another. I'm tripping. And I trip all night, and then I realize I have to be at work in the morning. And I'm like, fuck. So I spent like two hours writing my email to my boss, and I'm like, this has to be good. It has to be convincing. I, I thought about it over and over, rewrote the email like 10 times, and I was like, this is the best out of office email ever. The next day I woke up, and I went back and looked at it, and it said, sip, back tomorrow. <laughs> um, all right, if I, am I out of time? Good. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. Perfect. Listen, I bet you if you don't win tonight, you're gonna make some money on the acid and the, and the stuff tonight. Yeah. I bet you a few of us will be talking to you. Yeah. And who'll be talking to you next is Frenchie! <laughs> We're into February. You guys fuck up your New Year's resolutions yet? I'm still plugging away at mine. I wanted to get healthier. I got my resting heart rate down to 70 beats per minute. I got 70 more to go. <laughs> I saw a bumper sticker that said abuse animals go to jail and that bumper sticker reads entirely different if it's a declarative sentence or a call to action. <laughs> Figments exist only in your imagination. The other day I was riding down the street and there was a bunch of guys working on the side of the road, working hard, building back America great again all that shit. And right afterwards someone had the nerve to put a sign that said end road work. We got a lot of work to do. If I could offer one piece of advice to the youth of America, it would be to get into McFlurry machine maintenance. You guys have any idea how they score uh, um, figure skating? Is it just whoever's dizziest at the end? I don't cut my six pack rings because I want to see evolution's answer to that. It's impossible to buy a brand new mirror, you can only buy a used mirror. Reflect on that one for a second. <laughs> if you have a uh, welcome mat, you're open season to deaf vampires. I'll leave you on this one. You are shit and you aren't shit are both the same exact insult. <laughs> Thank you, Frenchie. And you were saying, that's like punctuation makes the difference, right? It's the difference between helping your Uncle Jack off a horse or helping your uncle 
jack off a horse. Punctuation and timing, amazing. You do both, yes you do, Jasmine. And speed, who's amazing? Bob Giannini! Thanks a lot, guys. It's nice to be here. You know, earlier today I was uh, Mass General because my brother Michael uh, had a surgery. Uh, so this is actually my second open mic tonight. <laughs> now I'll state that I, I, a woman comic recently, and I can tell that she ran open mics uh, because whenever we had sex, uh, she'd always give me the light when I had a minute left. <laughs> We had a tough relationship, you know, like, she was really sick, and uh, her chest was very decongested, so I figured I would be the good boyfriend, you know, so I, I got some Vicks Vapor Rub, and I gently rubbed it uh, on my cock. <laughs> I guess that didn't work too well. Anyway, I'm a, uh, a little bit about myself. I am a uh, son of an immigrant mother. Okay, my mother was born and raised in a shithole country uh, called East Boston, Massachusetts. Ah, damn. It's a fucking third world land. Yeah, East Boston. Yeah. My mother's Boston through and through. You know, I recently bought a house, right? And I was going through the whole process. I was like, hey, Ma, you know, I'm thinking about moving out to the Midwest. You know, she goes, the Midwest? She goes, Jesus, why would you want to move to Worcester? <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Thank you. Fucking Boston, that's an amazing country. War torn Ireland. Coming to the stage, Keith Allen! So I kinda had this nightmare scenario where I was like, alright, do I do my song now or do I and then have nothing for when I you know uh it's, it's, uh, so, but I, I uh, but my side, but the, oh, the third verse is the best, man. Um, I, you know, I, it really is like it's CBS, you know, whatever, uh, Rite Aid, whatever. You, you do that thing where like you recognize someone that you don't want to see. Uh, you, you can't say hello to them. So you like diminish your whole self. You become like a person who. Uh, uh, I become very focused on like the pencils over here for for a little while, and then, but then, but then lately I've been like no, no, I'm and I I I I I have this fantasy of like I'm gonna go over to this person and I'm gonna, you know, I, 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 hey I you know I I. I I, that's not funny at all. Who the fuck cares? <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, I'm stopping saying Jesus. I, I, I really came. You know, mushrooms really brought me back around to Jesus, but, it, uh, but no one wants to hear that. Uh, um, you know, I, I, I was talking to my uncle Lou um, the other the other day, and uh, coconut oil came up, and he just hopped right on coconut oil. And I was like, this has to be masturbatory, right? He, there's no way my uncle Lou is 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 this into. Coconut oil if he's not masturbating with it. And cut my, um, I, uh, I, I, oh, the, uh, 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 no, that's just sad, 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 sad. Uh, I already talked about the wiping standing up. That was like my big thing. I was like, uh, uh, oh, you ever got a sh horrible shooting pain in your deep anal area for like one second? And you're like, yes, that's, and then it just goes away. I probably, that happens to me sometimes. And that happened to me when you rolled over the light. No, oh, I'm just saying. All right, your last one, Greg, and Greg is brave. He wanted me to spin this fucking shitty wheel. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, you could have done the wheel? Really? He asked for it. You really wanted the fucking wheel? Wait a minute, wait a minute. No, I don't even want to get into that shit. Alright. Fucking TV theme songs, dude. TV theme songs. Seinfeld. Sorry, bro. Seinfeld. I don't know. I feel like it has to be catchy enough if the audience likes it. But like good enough for like it's an actual song. Like there's no in between of like a good theme song and a bad theme song. Like they're all good. Like Friends is good, The Office is good, Seinfeld's good. Golden Girls. 
Golden Girl, sure, you know, that you yeah. like, you know, I don't know. No? Uh, spin that wheel, please, again. I'm already running out of food. That's all right, that's all right. I love Let's that. Go. I love Let's that. The guy, guy, the guy brave. Hold on, I didn't have the wheel ready for you. Here you go. Yeah. Holy shit, how about, uh, ooh. why does this keep coming up fucking, oh, people you hate. Hate. Democrats. <laughs> people I hate. I don't know. I feel like hating people is kind of overrated. Like it's been done before. It's not a, <laughs> it's not a proven theory. Like you can't hate people like to a point where things get better. The math doesn't pan out. Like we've tried for 10,000 years of society. Hating doesn't equal <laughs> utopia. <laughs> I don't know. I'll try it though. You point a Nazi at me. And I'll point at them. <laughs> spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. That caused me to spin the wheel. I'm dying. You're dying. You're not dying. You're doing all right. How about uh, sex? Sex. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Yeah. I feel like sex is not underrated, but the approach is always underrated. If the amount of effort a guy has to put in for sex is always like, yeah, you know, if it happens, it happens. But the payoff is so huge, it should be like a more of an effort, yo. It shouldn't be like, I'll put on a hoodie, I'll go on Tinder. It should be like the mission of your life. It's the focal point of our biology to have sex. We're like, meh, you know, I'm like 25, I could like kick it out, you know? If it comes, it comes, if it doesn't, it doesn't, you know? I don't know. I feel like if you were having sex, and a girl looked at you and said, wow, we're having sex right now, it would be too meta of a question for me to not. You know, it'd be like, my mind is boggled. Like, what kind of logical Rubik's cube of a sentence you just said? All right, next one. That's it. Okay. Hey, let's look at this Are you guys ready to see the showcase? Are you guys ready to see 10 minutes of comedy? Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? Beta, are you ready? Woo! All right, you're gonna have a little music down here to get introduced to. And do your comedy through. Please, put your hands together for one of my champions, one of my friends, Joe Capito! Are you ready for your third consecutive hour of some kind of comedy? Are we still alive? Right. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Uh, this is the most like organized but disorganized open mic I've ever seen. Like, I, know, I, know, I know we're calling it a show because like, it started out like great, and then you all just started throwing shit. You know what I mean? You're like, can we give them two minutes, three minutes, spin a wheel? What was on the wheel, bro? Did you design the wheel? Oh, I was lazy. Oh, that was well. Yeah, you should throw some more fun stuff. I don't know. <laughs> I'm a little, uh, I'm a little perturbed today. I don't mean to like pander to Northampton, but are we all like team fuck landlords? Yeah. Do you all own houses? Is that why you're not? None of you are renters anymore at this point. Yeah, dude. Okay. So here's the deal. I, I particularly am not. I live in Northampton. I'm not really fond of like the hipster landlords because I feel like they sell you on a bill of goods that you're not actually getting. Right? So like, I'm reading like the ads, I'm talking to the person, they're like, oh, like this apartment has beautiful, rustic vibes. <laughs> I'm like, you do know that rusted and rustic are not synonymous terms, right? <laughs> the stove has psoriasis, it's flaking on the floor, like what, what is happening right now? <laughs> you have a beautiful view of the backyard through the kitchen. It's like, yeah, because there's a hole in the door. Like, they can see in two, the blinds don't go down that far. But today was like windy as fuck, right? Like, I think we can all like agree we've been outside. Yeah. The Vietnam would be jealous of the draft in my windows. Like, it's. I set up, you know that plastic wrap that you can like seal your shit like if your windows are trashy? Yeah, I had that going strong for like two months this morning. It sounded like a gunshot when there was like a burst and it just exploded off of the wall. Like I'm, yeah, fuck landlords, that's okay. <laughs> that's where I was at. Give it up for your host, Todd. Hosting's not an easy game. Yeah. Hosting is a challenge. You, you've weathered this storm very well, Todd. Uh, I was, I was hosting the other day, and uh, I got 
I got heckled and I dare dare I say I got sexually harassed. <laughs> right? Like I was telling I was talking about like a, telling a story about a comedian who was in the room and she called me at one point, uh, she called me hippie long stockings. <laughs> I was wearing like tight ass jeans and I was like, that's fair. And like I said that shit, right? And like this dude in the front's like, oh, like turn around. Give us a spin, like let me see it. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, so I feel like that was like, you know, sexually harassed and stuff, but I, I gotta be honest with you guys, big fan, okay? <laughs> big fan. I don't know, I don't know uh, how you guys feel. I don't think men get compliments too much. Ladies, the, the two of you in the room. Have y'all ever been catcalled before? Come on. Yeah, she's not even paying attention. You've been catcalled before? It's not the best, right? You got some guy driving by. He's like, hey, your legs look tired. Why don't you take a seat on my mustache? He probably looks like him. <laughs> He's lying. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it was six months ago. Give me right. Right. I beat the charges. I beat the charges, okay? I got a good defense attorney. Uh, have y'all ever been catcalled and then, and then heard, ugh, never mind? <laughs> yeah, because I would argue that's way worse. And like, here's the deal. Like, I get it. It makes sense. Like, from behind, could be confusing. Nice <laughs> hair. There is a can. It's cool. Like, I've been swatting. <laughs> So the point is, like, I was really, like, I was really glad to get these compliments, even though he was totally sexually harassed me. Because, like, I don't know, like, do you remember, like, during the pandemic, like, you were, there was, like, no social interaction. Like, I wasn't dating anybody, so there was, like, I was getting nothing. You know what I mean? I remember, like, the first time, like, I went to a, like, a coffee shop, and, like, some woman was just like, oh, I, like, I like your hair. Like, my brain just started fucking shooting off fireworks. I was like, is this love? Where I'm free, or, like, like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, started going to therapy. Anybody in therapy? A lot more. You need to be clapping for that. That's all. I've been here all night. I'm just saying. Uh, yeah, I went to uh, started going to therapy for like anxiety. We all know, like anxiety. Anybody got anxiety at all? Yeah. yeah. All just perfect, cool, calm, collected. Yeah. Okay. Anxiety. Um, and the thing that sucked was like right away, like they just wanted to throw medication at it. Right, a couple of sashes, you do a little back and forth, and it's like, why don't you try a little medication? I was like, if you're throwing Zannies at me, like, I'm definitely down for that. Like, hook it up. And she's like, you don't have Zanny insurance. So I was like, all right. <laughs> and then I got to see what's going on with this, like, you know, uh, fucking medication. So like, I look at like, the side effects, and it's like restlessness, nausea, headaches. I'm like, cool, anxiety. Like, you know what I mean? Like, all the things that come with it, like, fantastic. And uh, then I saw this other thing, like, uh, they had, like, a male-female section and, like, under dudes, it was, like, uncontrollable erections. <laughs> I was like, I can think of nothing more anxiety-producing <laughs> than being a 32-year-old gentleman who looks like me, <laughs> who can't control what his dick does in any situation. <laughs> yeah. Have y'all, uh, heard... <laughs> this guy gets it. Uh, have y'all heard the phrase that uh, there are two guarantees in life? Yeah. What are the two guarantees in life? Death and taxes. Death and taxes. I went to a show in Rhode Island, uh, and I learned that there are three guarantees in life. Uh, it's death, taxes, and if you give a middle-aged straight white man a microphone, he will complain about his marriage a lot. <laughs> That's pretty much what the entirety of that show was. Like I should have. I, I think I should have figured it out. Like you know, the, the guy's name was like Mike Hockey. Uh, it should have just been prepared for what was about to happen. But like, they complained about really dumb shit. You know what I mean? Like, one guy gets up there, he's like, Oh, ever since I got married, uh, my wife started making me wash my balls. <laughs> yeah, I was like, my brother in Christ, what have you been doing this entire time? <laughs> Were you just like, do you do you all just like do the shower drizzle? Does this not does this not resonate with any? You're like, I don't wash my balls. <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, it was wild. The other thing was it was like uh, ever since ever since I got married, uh, I can't just jerk off anywhere in my house anymore. Now I gotta jerk off in the laundry room. I was like, yeah, I've been a renter in a while. Happy bro. I was like, you guys, you have a laundry room that you can jerk off in, bro. You know what happens if I jerk off in my laundry room? The laundromat around the corner from here. <laughs> <laughs> There's the potential for trouble. <laughs> and here's the deal, I'm having a good time, right? I'm just doing my thing. <laughs> Somebody walks in the room, now it feels all weird. I start to get anxiety. 
I take a medication, my boner's not going away anymore, I have to keep jerking off. This is really problematic at this point, okay? <laughs> Too far with that? All right. No, 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 no. no. go, baby, go. You're as long as Nick likes it, that's all that matters to me. Fuck uh, <laughs> Any religious people in the audience? I know you're a reverend, but any actual religious people? <laughs> Formerly religious, any you you were not like an Irish Catholic guy, Bob, come from fucking Boston? <laughs> yeah, I'm an ex Catholic Italian. Italian? Yeah. Oh, okay. Ex Catholic. Aren't they Catholic? Yes. Okay, so you're not Catholic anymore? Still Catholic? So you can get it religion on me? I just, it was a real, it's, yes, no, yeah. Because here's the thing, I think what, religion's a little weird. Like, I, I went to a, a private Christian school for 13 years, right? And, like, the main thing that I took away from the Bible, especially in, like, my early years, was that uh, religious people hate holes. <laughs> if it's a hole and you're having fun with it, they hate it, right? Butt holes, front holes, mouth holes, they hate it. But not a loophole. <laughs> Religious people love a loophole. And I kinda think that's I kinda think that's how some fetishes got started. <laughs> you know, you just kinda like sitting there just like going through the book a little bit and you're like, thou shalt not this, thou shalt not that. Does it say anything about fucking feet? <laughs> Just say thou shalt not fuck a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna end with that. That's my time. Give it up, your host. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Capito's to everybody. Yeah. You wonder why he's one of my champions. <laughs> Fucking handsome dude. Yeah. Like, if he doesn't do comedy, he could do like what my other dream is. I wanted to be a male stripper. Yeah, look at Steve. What? <laughs> Like, I know, I know, like, listen, like, I, I will, I will, like, and, I, and I'm a businessman, too, like, I know, I know I can't compete with anybody like Joe. That's what I mean. Frenchie and Reverend, fuck yeah. <laughs> and I know most ladies aren't going to pay me to take my clothes off. So I'm coming out as a reverse stripper. Fuck ass nigga, you got to pay me to put it back on. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Your next comic, he... Suffered, I mean, won through these three hours of comedy contests from Boston via Cape Cod, right? Cape Cod via Boston. Oh, Giannini. Yeah. Oh, boy. I'm going to come up some new shit. <laughs> some new shit. Oh, man, I was just uh, watching the news. I just found out that the uh, 2022 uh, National Hydro Sea Champion uh, was found dead today in her. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I just have stuff. Sorry, I start off my showcase with a bad joke. <laughs> but it's all uphill. Yeah. Well, a little bit about myself. I'm from uh, uh, Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Cape Cod. I love Cape Cod where every day is Shock Week. You know, I miss the old days in Cape Cod, you know, when a young girl can go swimming in the oceans off a hyenas board and the only animal that would bite her feet was Ted Kennedy. <laughs> Yeah. You guys ever been to Promise Town? You guys familiar with Promise Town? Yeah, Promise Town. Yeah. I like I like going to Promise Town because uh, Promise Town just just tells you, just comes right out with it. You know, like last time I was in Promise Town, there was a sign that said uh, uh, construction, uh, manhole adjusting. <laughs> uh, sort of. Sort of That's Promise Town, everybody. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of stuff going on in the news. Uh, you guys hear about this uh, big retirement that just happened the other day, the big retirement? Yeah. yeah. Ozzy Osbourne's not touring anymore. No. How's that? Oh, Ozzy. Yeah. yeah. Ozzy says he's going to move back to England because America's now too violent. Yeah. This is, comes from a man who once bit the head off of a bat. Yeah. Ozzy Osbourne. I'm a big music guy. You know, I, mean, I love music. I got big music fans here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I was like, <laughs> a lot of bands go out on tour and they, and they combine tours, you know? Like, I just read that, that Def Leppard and uh, Poison are going out on tour. You guys hear about this? But I would think, I would think uh, during the pandemic, I would think that uh, Poison would go out on tour with The Cure. But that's just me. Yeah. That's just me. I was talking about the 45 Cent tour earlier when, uh, when Nickelback went on tour with 50 Cent. 
Would that be a good one? Yeah. How about Marvin Gaye and Charlie Pride? Have a nice Gay Pride tour. <laughs> Marvin Gaye and George Strait. You have a Gay and Strait tour. Yeah. No, I guess not. <laughs> I went to a Motown show. I saw Marvin Gaye on it, right? And uh, there was a guy who did an impression of Marvin Gaye. So I went up to him afterwards. I go, man, that was really good. But do you know what would really make that a great impression? If your father came out and shot you. <laughs> <laughs> I work in Boston. Um, if you guys go to Boston, I always recommend going to Boston. I always recommend driving around and looking at all our beautiful parks that we have. You know, like there's uh, Fenway Park and there's Franklin Park. Uh, there's nowhere to fucking park. That's a great one. It's usually next to 50 bucks to fucking park. That's usually right next to that one. That's a great place to go to. Yeah. Where I work, I work by the Boston Common, and uh, we, have, we have a lot of protests there. You know, like uh, we had, um, well, because we just had Thanksgiving recently, so we had a lot of Indians out there. So they were, uh, they were, you know, marching and all. So I joined them, you know, and we all started dancing and we all started chanting and all that stuff. But we had to stop because uh, it started raining. <laughs> so that shit really works. <laughs> I'm telling you, that shit really works. I'm trying to do shit that I haven't already done. All right, so this, this, is, where, this is where it gets tough. This is what I'm, I'm, unless I want to do my own, I'm trying to do, this is not my act. <laughs> this is not my act. I'm trying to do different stuff. So, uh, anyway. Um, I want to do different stuff. Yeah, like I said, I'm a big, I'm a big music guy. And I know these bands are getting old that are on tour now. Do you know the first person to tour uh, uh, Las Vegas when it opened back up after the pandemic? Anybody want to? Tony Bennett. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you want to want to guess how old Tony Bennett is? 95. No, he's 137. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Bennett saying, I left my teeth back in San Francisco. <laughs> Tony Bennett. A buddy of mine says he's going to go see The Who. Remember The Who? Yeah. 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 He goes, I mean, I can't want to take it off, 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 take it off my bucket list. I go, listen, man, you're not going to go see The Who. I mean, think about it. I mean, Pete Towns is 77, Roger Daltrey is 77, Keith Moon's dead, John Entwistle's dead. I mean, man, you're not going to go see the who. You're going to go see who's left. Uh, oh! Woo! Oh, I mean, Towns is dead, man. You're going to change his band name to what? <laughs> what? Oh, different jokes. What? <laughs> I'm, trying to just, I'm just trying to do different shit. Um, I like basketball. Big basketball fan, Sam. Woo! Woo! Celtics fan. I mean, Woo! Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Celtics great. You know, it's like uh, uh, you know, it's a Black History Month. You know, like hey, Bill Russell died. Um, you know, like that Bill Russell was the first black coach in, uh, in professional sports. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the Celtics were also did something unheard of back in the '60s, where they had five black players on the court at the same time. Unheard of. Now in the '80s, the Celtics did something that was even more unheard of. Yeah, they put five white players on the court. <laughs> I like watching TNT, you know, I see Shaq and Charles Barkley. Yeah. Uh, Charles Barkley wrote an autobiography a few years ago, and that bitch too was misquoted. <laughs> this autobiography. <laughs> this is where I do my other basketball joke. All right, I'm gonna do one impression. <laughs> this is a basketball sports writer in an NBA locker room trying to interview Shaquille O'Neal, <laughs> who just stopped out of the shower and stopped naked. <laughs> Hey, Shaq, you guys had some uh, problems with defense. You can't explain that. <laughs> Shaq's got a giant cock. That's a bad stereotype because that's actually somebody from the WNBA. WNBA. What the WNBA stands for? We need balls as soon as possible. WNBA. Nice. That's right. Nice. That's right. <laughs> Three. Three. Three minutes. Oh shit. You're crushing it. Yeah, I'm doing crushing. Wow. Just trying to do my interest stuff. Alright, uh, what else do I like? I like uh, I like documentaries. You guys like watching documentaries? Yeah. yeah I just saw this documentary on Lorena Bobbin. You guys remember Lorena Bobbin? Oh, yeah. Back in the 90s, yeah. Um, chopped off her husband's uh, penis. Anyway, she's on the Food Network. Uh, promoting this documentary. Uh, she's on the Food Network show, Chopped. Yeah. <laughs> Chopped. That's right. She was on the 
food ever so chopped. A lot of stuff going on in 2022, a lot of big news. Uh, that Queen Elizabeth died this year. You know the Queen? She was a Queen uh, for 70 years. Which actually makes her England's second longest serving Queen uh, behind Elton John. Big news last year. No, they found a uh, a fifth dead body in Lake Mead. You know Lake Mead. Yeah. Lake Mead provides drinking water for 20 million people out west. Yeah, it's like, boy, you think people get pissed when they put fluoride in the water? <laughs> I like that one. All right, what else uh, am I going to talk about? Um, I used up all my shit earlier. Science! Science! Yeah. Anyway, uh, like I said, I'm from the Cape. Are you guys, uh, you, said you guys aren't familiar with Providence, but, uh, the Providence town? Yeah, really. You know, uh, we just had Thanksgiving. Do you guys realize about the, uh, when the pilgrims landed, they actually stopped in Providence town first before they settled in Plymouth? You guys know that? Yes, I did. Which kind of begs the question. It's like, what if they had stayed there? <laughs> and Providence Town was America's hometown. <laughs> you know, have to rewrite all the history books. You know, oh, in the year 1620, the uh, natives of Providence Town, the Pilgrims, celebrated the country's first Thanksgiving dinner. Well, the natives of Providence Town introduced the Pilgrims to such things as turkey, cranberry sauce, uh, and the music of Cher. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man, that's all I'm going to do. Thanks. <laughs> Bob, you're you're definitely getting those gay pops in the back. You were hitting that that demographics back there. Steve, you guys, I love that. You guys, tip, please, tip Steve if you're drinking. Nick, Nick, definitely tip him. Okay, I know you are. Hey, what's your name over there, Ty, Ty girl? Not like Ty, like, like we were talking earlier, right? Now we get the Ty Eileen. jokes, okay. Yeah. Eileen? Yeah. Oh. Like, come on, Eileen. No, I was going to say, like, the girl with one leg. Eileen. Eileen all the time. Yeah, yeah. Like I was saying, right, I was a stepdad three times, which means I was married three times. Every woman I have dated, have been married to, have been with, have dated me more than once, multiple times. And as Joe said, my given name is Todd. That makes them all retarded. I knew it killed in Boston. I fucking knew that kills in Boston. But you know who kills? Who really kills? Hey, a little, a little courtesy here, please. A little courtesy. We have my last champion coming up here to give you some amazing material. My friend, Jason Marby. I'm so glad that nobody's here so I can put my phone in the front row. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, welcome to the county show co uh, sponsored by uh, Autism. Uh, Jesus Christ. This has been quite the event. It's like the Hunger Games of comedy. I mean, Jesus Christ, we're just killing each other for nothing. Uh, I got to compete with this band downstairs. You guys seen it earlier? They came up here to grab instruments like they left in their mom's basement. Uh, a bunch of greasy crackers. I think they call themselves the Crisco Triscuits. I don't know. Uh, oh, Jesus Christ. Look at this lovely painting. I heard Jasmine did this. It's a, it's a picture of uh, Pops making fun of Asian people. Uh, like he's saying something like, Oh, for four more dollars, you get free egg roll. Um, that's him saying that, not me. Oh, it's so good to be back up here in Bishops. I don't come here often because this place sucks. Um, you guys look like a majestic crowd anyways. Um, still high from yesterday's gummy. There's two kinds of gummies that they make. There's the... Uh, there's the dispensary gummy, which is regulated for consistency and quality, and uh, uh, then there's the uh, homemade gummy, which is designed to fuck you up as much as possible whenever the hell it wants. Those homemade gummies are like having an alcoholic father. You have no idea when that motherfucker's gonna hit you. <laughs> is it gonna be in the car? Is it gonna be in the store? Is it just gonna wait till we get home? I don't know. Um, What's a good joke to tell in Northampton? Probably 
I'll tell you what, yeah, I'll tell you what. Uh, I remember the first, I remember when my brother, my older brother came out to me. It was uh, the first day of my senior year of high school. Now, I don't know if I was excited or nervous, but I forgot to set my alarm clock. Now, being someone who always looked out for me, he decided to wake me up with what he called blowjob surprise. It's not funny, he pinched my nose, I couldn't breathe. <laughs> we, uh, we just got through the holidays a little while ago. I hope everybody had a nice holiday wherever you guys celebrate. Um, I realized at my age that Christmas is no longer about me. It's not. You know, I've got a girlfriend to take care of. I've got a 15 year old son. I'm last on the list. So I always get myself something nice. And for some reason this year, I have stumbled upon the Fleshlight website. <laughs> I mean, I, I want to replace that one I got because uh, it's got some miles on it. Listen, I own a flashlight for the same reason I own a flashlight, you know, emergencies. Um, right. <laughs> I, I found out that they sell refurbished flashlights. What? Yeah, I don't know if they're like leftovers from a try or buy or an open box policy, but uh, you can buy a refurbished flashlight. I didn't, but you can. <laughs> And uh, I, I don't know, how does everyone feel about that? Would you buy a refer flight? Would you buy a refer flight? No, because nobody wants to spend money on something that somebody else had their dick in. That's exactly why I go Dutch on first dates. Oh. Now I'm down the middle. She ordered the frickles. I don't want anything to do with them. Not that I don't get down on a frickle, but these were frickle spears and not frickle chips. And everybody knows that frickle chips are the superior frickle. Oh. Even rolls off the tongue a little bit with frickle chips. You hear frickle spears, you think Britney had another kid. <laughs> I fucking love this light. I feel like I'm telling you guys ghost stories. <laughs> it would be a good North End ghost story about like homophobia past or something like that. I'm 45 years old. Like Northampton is a very, very progressive city, but I remember when it used to be cool. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you guys know what a conditioned response is? The best example of a conditioned response is Pavlov's dog. Have you guys heard about Pavlov and his dogs? Well, that's what's a conditioned response is. Uh, a repeated action that can dictate an outcome in the future. Pavlov used to present food to his dog and ring a bell, and the dog would salivate. And eventually, over time, Pavlov could ring the bell, shut the fuck up out there, Pavlov could ring a bell, and the dog would still salivate, skinny jeans. Some douchebag in a leather jacket with a ponytail is ruining my show. God, come on, be quiet, dude. Is this what's gonna turn into here? I'm sorry. All right. It works here, sorry. No, I'm good. I, I work here. All right. I don't care. You should know better than me. I should. I got it. All right. Um, so Pavlov's dog in the conditioned response. So here's what I've been doing. I've been having my girlfriend torture my balls during sex. Woo! Because I want that pain to be associated with a pleasurable experience. Because I think every guy in this room has been hitting the balls before. We know how unpleasant it can be. In fact, over time, we have a conditional response. When something moves towards our nuts, we jerk back like this. It's just, we naturally jerk back. What that actually is, it's our asshole turning around and grabbing our dick by the collar and saying, Get the fuck out of the road! There's traffic! <laughs> I remember the first time I was kicked in the balls. I was 11 years old and my 10 year old sister came in my room and kicked me square in the nuts. I don't even remember why. I dropped to the floor and I just had an immense amount of pain. About a half hour passed, my parents made my sister apologize to me. She came down to my room, knocked on my door, and the instant I opened the door, I punched her in the face. <laughs> my mother ran down and said, you can't do that. And my dad grabbed my mom by the shoulder and said, no. He just got hit in the nuts. She's got to learn you can't do that to a guy. Now my parents are arguing. Next thing you know, my dad's beating the shit out of my mother. I mean, he's been drinking. And so I know it's wrong, and I step in, and now he's hitting me, who is originally defending. And that's the day I learned that a drunk dad's a lot like a weed gum, because you never know when that motherfucker's going to hit you. Thank you guys very much. I'm Jason Allen. I'm very sorry for interrupting. I did not mean to. Also, oh, right. Jason Marby, everybody! What do you need? The downstairs band, everybody! Dude who works here walking in, everybody! Sawyer. Of course it is. Sawyer from Northampton. 
<laughs> and, and, and you mean that in the, the Game of Thrones way, right? Yes. All right, everybody. Listen, I'm not going to go around with the pen. I'm not going to go around with the pen. We're going to do this audibly. Who won tonight? And if you want to get pictures with the gloves, whether you win or not, so you can pretend that you won, so you can look cool to your friends, so you could look amazing. I don't know, so you can jerk off with a little. Whatever. Please, put your hands together if you think Mr. Joe Capinos is your champion. Please put your hands together if you believe Mr. Bob Giannini is your champion. Please put your hands together if you think Mr. Jason Marvey is your champion. Mr. Joe Capitos, please come forward. Uh, they may have skaties on the back, I'm not sure. Let's get a picture here. Uh, Jasmine will, there you go. Oh, Yeah, let's get all the comedians. All the comedians, you want to come on up, get a picture, come on up, please. We well, did very well. Y'all did well. Thank you for coming through. Come on up on stage, Nick. Come on up stage, everybody. They're going to be doing this in two weeks again. What's your name, I'm sorry? Logan. Logan. Nice to meet you. Wow. Yeah, everybody get in tight. Get in tight. All right, two more minutes, everyone. Everybody. And then we're going to do the first round. You mean 45 more seconds to get stand there? Real awkward pictures. Everybody say cheese. Everybody say Sawyer. Lose the shirts. Lose the shirts. Yeah.